guys. So first things first, um, I realized after recording the other video that Cordelia does not have eyebrows. So I'm going to give her eyebrows and I might fix her face because she looks weird to me. I think, I'm, I think it's her mouth. It's not very centered. I think her eyes aren't centered either. Okay, let me see. Oh no, she doesn't have a mouth still. Okay, is that kind of better? I don't know. Okay. Good enough. So, if you remember where we left off last time, um, remember King Lear was trying to um, separate his land between his three daughters and see which daughter loved him the most. And Goneril and Regan were both telling him that they loved him the most. And King Lear's favorite daughter is Cordelia, but he, um, so he expected her to try and get his attention to get most of his land, but she thought that his whole, um, his whole plan was, was kind of lame. And let's see, so, so she didn't do it. She didn't go through with it. She just um, kind of ignored him and talked back to him, remember? So, let's see. So then what ended up happening was, maybe I didn't draw his picture. Okay, so the Kent, the Earl of Kent, who I think I'm blocking here. The Earl of Kent spoke out against King Lear and said that um, he's sure that Cordelia does love him, right? But King Lear wouldn't hear it. He made the Earl of Kent um, leave. He said, out of my sight, he banished the Earl. Okay, so let me add that, that he is banished. Remember, and that means that you cannot come back um, or you will be killed. Let's see. Okay, so I know we read this last time, but I'll just read it real quick. So Lear then called forth two suitors who had been wooing Cordelia, so that means they wanted to marry her, and asked if either would marry her without a dowry. The Duke of Burgundy dropped his suit at once. So that means the Duke of Burgundy said, nope, not happening. Because remember, dowry is when... Um, they would pay to take Cordelia, take Cordelia into their family and marry their, their son. Um, but the King of France was impressed by Cordelia's honesty and said he loved her more than ever and would make her his queen. So she's now going to be with the King of France, who I think I might draw soon. We'll see. Okay. Take her, King Lear shouted and swept out of the throne room. As the rest of the royal party followed Lear, the Earl of Gloucester stood stunned by the king's rashness, so he's very surprised that the king acted that way. The Earl was one of the highest nobles in the land. He had never seen his king behave like this. It disturbed him, so he's very upset by it, right? Gloucester also thought about his own two sons, Edgar by his wife and Edmund, slightly younger, uh, by his mistress. Oh, so Edgar is his son from his wife, and then Edmund is his son by someone who he's not married to. Very interesting. So let's draw these guys. All right. So we have the Earl of Gloucester. So let's draw him here. So let's see. We'll make him 
him kind of bigger. I think he's more important. Should we make him have a similar face to the Earl of Kent? Should he have? I'll just give him black hair, I guess. Mm. Spiky? Okay. I'll give him a mustache because why not? Okay, and this is the Earl of Gloucester. make sure I spell his name right. Okay, and then he has two sons. One of them Edgar and another one Edmund, and I think they are important. Um, let's see. Yep, okay. So we have Edgar and Edmund. Let's see. So Edgar is older, so we'll make him look older, I guess. And then this can be Edmund. <laughs> okay. I want someone to have purple eyes again. I'll have Edgar have purple eyes. And you can have blue. Okay. Let's see. Maybe he'll have spiky hair too. Oh, I didn't even write their names. So this is Edgar. And this is Edmund. Is it you? Yes. All right. And they are the king's sons. So we'll put some arrows, I guess. Gloucester was confident that nothing would ever drive a wedge between him and either of his sons, or could any man's children turn against him. So Gloucester is basically saying that he thinks he has a very good relationship with his two sons. Um, he thinks they all get along very well. I mean, he doesn't think that what's happening that right here with King Lear and his daughters, he doesn't think that's ever going to happen with him and his sons. Unbeknownst to the Earl, Edmund was indeed at that moment scheming to get his father's land. Oh my goodness. So right now, Edmund, this guy, um, is thinking about trying to take his father's land. So poor Earl of Gloucester is unaware 
that his son is not very loyal. He planned to turn his father against Edgar. So Edmund is plotting to turn this son against his father. With the elder son out of the way, Edmund, the younger son, would inherit Gloucester's title and property. Okay, because right, so um, the eldest son always gets the father's land. So that's why Edmund wouldn't get his father's land. Edgar would. So that's why Edmund is trying to get Edgar out of the way so he can own all of his father's land. Edmund strode into the throne room reading a letter. When he was sure that his father had seen it, he hurriedly shoved the note into his, his doublet. So he's trying to hide it. Gloucester smiled. This letter must reveal some mischief. Was it a love letter? He laughingly asked Edmund to hand it over. I beseech you, sir, Edmund replied. It is a letter from my brother that I have not all read. And for so much as I have, I find it not fit for you. So he's saying that um, he has a letter from his brother and he hasn't finished reading it all. But from what he has read so far, he, his father should not be reading it. So it's kind of, um, he's trying to poke at his father to get his attention, I think. Gloucester's smile disappeared. He demanded to see the message. Edmund sighed and handed over the letter, which he had forged to look like Edgar's handwriting. Gloucester's eyes widened. Here was evidence that Edgar, anxious to get his, in his inheritance, was plotting against his own father's life. So Edmund is trying to make it seem like Edgar wants to get his land, even though Edmund is the one who's doing it, right? The old Earl was devastated. He ordered Edmund to find out more about his older brother's intentions and report back to him. Edmund nodded. Everything had gone just as he had planned. He sought out Edgar and professing brotherly loyalty, warned him that their father was in a murderous rage against him for unknown reasons. So now Edmund is going to his brother Edgar and saying, oh my gosh, dad is so mad at you. You have to be careful. He's, he's just trying to make your, your life difficult. And he doesn't know why, right? Which really he does know why. He's starting all the trouble. Where am I? Okay, Edmund urged Edgar to go into hiding. So he's telling his brother to go run away. He promised um, he would intercede with their father on Edgar's behalf. Edgar was be bewildered by this strange warning but believed his brother and fled into the countryside. So now Edgar has gone away and is hiding out because of what Edmund told him. Within a week, King Lear had installed himself in Goneril's castle. He brought with him a hundred boisterous knights and a court fool. The king and his followers spent their days hunting and their nights feasting and merrymaking. They wore out the castle servants and Goneril's patience. Um, okay, so King Lear, I guess, is staying with this daughter, Goneril, and he's having everyone work so hard to entertain him that Goneril's getting very mad at him. Our court shows like a riotous inn, Goneril told her father. So their their court, their, um, their entertainment basically, people who perform for them and people who prepare food for them, they're doing so much work that she feels like it's, it's not fair and it's too loud. Um, she instructed her servants to ignore the commands of the old king and his followers. So she's telling them, if he tells you he wants more food or he wants someone per performing, just don't do it for him, okay? Um, now that she owned one half of the kingdom, Goneril swelled with her new power. So she's getting a little power hungry. She would rule as she saw fit. She ignored the fact that she and her sister had promised to care for their father in his old age. Lear was shocked by this ill treatment. Ingratitude, more hideous in a child than in the sea monster, the king complained to his um constant companion, the fool. The fool was not surprised in the least. Thou hadst little wit in thy bald crown. When thou gavest thy golden one away, he, he clucked. The fool always told the truth, but dressed it up as a joke. So he's saying, he's telling the king that the king was not being very smart when he gave his crown away, um, which is true. The king was not being very smart, especially the way he handled it, I think. He made a, quite a few people angry at him. Um, 
So let's draw the pool, I think. It seems like, yes, we will draw the pool somewhere. Oh my goodness. Oh, it needs to have that little hat. You know what? I think we're going on too long. Okay, we're gonna stop here and continue um, with the drawing of the fool, okay? So see you guys in the next video.